Uh, this video is going to take you through how we refurbished and fixed a cylinder for a Gearheart 1924 circular socket in the machine. Some of the fins on the, as you can see on the top of the, of the cylinder, were chipped off. Now we had some of the pieces. You can see the two pieces that we saved over to the right. But there's actually four chipped fins, two of which we had chips, replacement chips for that we had saved when they broke off, and two of them we didn't. And so this video is going to basically be about how we re refabricated two new fin tops and glued in the other ones. Now the problem with uh, having chipped fins on a Gearheart cylinder is that when you knit fabric, the places where there's chips, the tension of the uh, stitches is closer together so that you can see these two columns of stitches where there's chipped fins are closer together than the other stitches. We bought two products to be able to fix this. The first one was JB Weld Quick Weld, which is an epoxy, a two-part epoxy with uh, uh, the steel metal-like product and the hardener piece. When they're combined, um, it actually creates a very strong bond. Um, and we use that to glue in the chips uh, for the existing ones. We also brought a, bought a product called JB Weld Steel Stick, which is more like a, a clay or a putty. Um, it, it's similar in nature in terms of you have to mix two different products. This tube has an outer layer of the actual polymer steel-like substance and an inner layer of um, hardener. And when combined, it creates an incredibly quick drying, quick uh, and very strong uh, bond. The other thing we did is we actually cut out pieces of vinyl from an old plastic bottle. Um, and so we created strips. You can see here we created one long strip, or two long strips rather, that go down the entire length of the cylinder, and then smaller chips that we insert in the wider section that surround the broken, chipped off fin. Um, we found that this kind of plastic vinyl uh, from an old it happens to be an old moisturizer bottle, doesn't stick to either the epoxy or the JB Weld putty that we bought to, the steel stick that we bought to replace the fins. And so it came in very useful. You can see here how we actually combined um, the two longer ones and the three in each of the different and bigger slots to create a, a small opening that will both support the chip fix when we glue it in and the putty fix when we refabricate a, a new top of the chip. So here we are. We've actually combined the hardener and the epoxy for the first one and taking the chip we've actually coated both the inside piece of the cylinder, the chipped off piece, and the, the uh, recovered piece and we inserted it carefully in between those slots created by the, the cutout bottles of vinyl plastic. And the glue actually created an incredibly strong bond. When you see it, this, you can see here we put a black dot with a, a marker on the one pin that we glued back in. And um, it's actually hard to see the difference. Uh, it, it was an incredibly close fit. But even if it wasn't, the epoxy actually filled in a lot of the places where uh, the, the chip might not have perfectly uh, matched. It might have been broken off and, and had small pieces taken off of that. Um, but it created an incredibly hard and fast piece. But we, it, we did find that it was required that we put epoxy on both the, um, the place where we were putting it and the other and the piece that we were putting in there. Here's where we refab refabricated a missing part of the fin. So you can see the, the putty has two pieces to it. The inner black uh, section is the hardener and the outer part is the, uh, the clay piece of it. So we cut off with a razor blade a, a cross section of the putty and carefully mixed it. It's kind of dirty um, and gets all over your hands so but we use gloves to um, actual, actually mix it. But be very careful. You might want to time um, the amount of time that you actually mix the putty and uh, massage the putty and knead the putty together. Um, we did it for about a minute before it started getting hard. 
We found after about two minutes it started getting a little bit too hard. And so there's plenty of clay um, or a steel stick, JB Weld steel stick to play with. So we played with it quite a bit to kind of find out how quickly we needed to do it. So um, we took almost a full minute to um, combine the, the two components of the steel stick. And you'll see we've already put into place the, uh, the mold again, which is just small strips of the uh, plastic bought a bottle that we had cut up into strips that fit very specifically into it. Now again, this is two long strips that go down the full length of the, the cylinder, and then six additional tiny strips that go into the wider section. And you can't see it very easily in this part of the video, but as, as we go to insert the, the putty into it, you'll see that there's a small opening that creates the mold associated with where we're going to refabricate the, the top chipped off piece of the pin. And so once it's done, um, it's ready to go in. We roll it into a small piece and then take a, um, in this case, a dental pick and actually push it directly into the, the molded section and continue to press it in there as firmly and as closely as you can. Um, we found that um, the nice small pick was was good for inserting as much putty into the very thin mold that, that we could. Um, and then we put additional pieces in there to make sure it was completely filled in. And then we took um, both a razor blade and uh, a screwdriver to press it in there as strongly as we possibly could. We weren't sure quite how um, well this would adhere to it, so we pressed it in very firmly um, with this screwdriver and uh, had to make sure that it adhered as evenly and as quickly as possible to the um, component piece we were doing. And we used the razor blade to scrape away some of the excess. And don't worry about leaving some of the excess out there. Um, we actually had a little bit of excess um, quick weld on the uh, steel stick on the vinyl mold. And so when we took that out, we found that um, it didn't stick to the plastic at all. Um, and we could easily file down with just um, mild sanding and sandpaper. We were able to sand down any rough edges and things like that very easily. Um, but this mold actually created a very um, even replacement piece for it. Um, we also have found out from some of the experts who have been refurbishing for decades on these machines that uh, you can actually use the epoxy, the, um, the steel epoxy from JB Weld to form that and use the same type of mold that we just created here and just pour the or insert the, the goopy epoxy into that mold and it, it will actually refab refabricate a fin as well. Although we did find the steel stick was a little bit more easy to use and a little bit more manageable in terms of uh, what we did with it and how we used it. Once we put, once we let that cure, um, we let it cure for about four hours and then we pulled out the vinyl and trimmed down anything we could with a razor blade while it was still a little bit cuttable. You can see the cylinder slot that's marked with four dots is the one that we fixed and you can see a slightly different color in the uh, top of the cylinder where we refurbished it but it's not broken and continued use on the cylinder so it's worked out really well. I'll let you know if there's any changes to that.